Right, I thought I'd do a, a quick um, a quick spiel to the to the old camera. There's a couple of things actually. Um, I'm I'm kind of doing um, a post a post journey um, admin. Yeah, getting your shit together after you've done a trip, and this seems to be kind of. I was moaning yesterday that I'm I'm not really getting into a routine. But this seems to be part of a routine of living on a boat and traveling on a boat. It's different living on a boat that doesn't, doesn't move, yeah, if you're static. Um, but then there's, and I suppose it's different um, living on a boat on a canal or a river system. But living on a boat that's a sea boat, whether it's motor or um, sail, especially sail, I think. And then add that, um, add to that the smallness of the space that you're living in um, then there's there's a few things um, that you you need to do so I like before you go anywhere it's quite surprising how long how much of the day prior to you going anywhere that you spend preparing to go somewhere I mean in my last day in Falmouth I went um, took the dinghy to the, I was at Anchor in, not Falmouth, in Dartmouth. I was at Anchor in Dartmouth off Kingswear. I took the dinghy into the town in between the tides, so I let the tide turn, then I nipped into the town, made sure the anchor was holding, nipped into the town, did a bit of shopping, messing around, and then uh, came back. I forgot to take the rubbish with me, so I've got three bags of rubbish that I need to get rid of in Falmouth. And, um, uh, and then I got the dinghy out, Put the dinghy away that's a that's about half hour task at least like you know doing that and then um i raised the anchor took the boat to the fuel pontoon to the fuel um barge got loads of fuel and then i went back to where i was and anchored again yeah well by the time you've done all that um that's, that's the best part of the bloody day gone you know you, you spent ages getting ready oh and i did my passage plan and the weather and uh, that is the best part of the day gone preparing to go somewhere the, i've had to do a couple of repairs the rope the rope on the hydrovane control that rope there dangling down there snapped um you're supposed to do what's called a hot weld hot weld on these ropes I, bet I, can't, no, I can't find it now where you just melt the two ends where you just melt the two ends of the rope together and it's supposed to be stronger than the rope and like a normal weld and all that well I did that and it all looked rather good and everything and um, it seemed to be quite strong and then it snapped at the weld so I've just done it again with the fire and, and we'll see how um, how that uh, how that uh, how that manages I've got to take that hydrovane vein off as well that's another job only five minute job but right um, so 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 the hot weld on the control rope of the hydrovane didn't really work that well so let's see if this one this one works a bit better so I've, I've been burning my fingers melting two bits of rope together which is great um, and then uh, the other thing was I want to do a little bit of a, a, re a review a review of equipment and the equipment that I'm I'm looking at right is this um, this life jacket the um, the crew crew life jacket it's a uh... yeah okay it's uh, I can't remember what fucking it doesn't there's no particular brand or anything but anyway it's a crew one it's um it it was quite expensive this it wasn't your bog standard um, 25 30 quid life jacket I think it was like I, I can't remember really I think it was maybe like 79 99 in a sale so I think it's like an hundred quid life jacket so it's like an offshore one right but um, and it is it, you know it seemed all right for the first season but effectively what they've done is they've they've made this really quite tough and um, piece of equipment which is pretty good I'm sure it's generally pretty good right um, except what they've done is they put cheap zips on it right so what one one thing that goes wrong crew life jackets is that this zip here 
and all this is the 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 inflatable sort of bladder I suppose and um, the compressed air cylinder and all this stuff is the hood and all this is inside this bit yeah and it's held inside with a zip yeah yeah that zip there yeah right but what happens is from somewhere up here there right it undoes from halfway down and it unzips and then everything falls out so from there it'll just unzip in the middle of the zip and then unzip and everything falls out so you might have to stop in the middle of everything and um and, and just mend your unzip it put everything back in and then zip it back up again and then it'll last for a until it does it again basically I've had it do it twice in one day and then I've had it do it not do it for a week or more but eventually the zip, this main zip will come undone and all the innards will fall out <coughs> right and then the other thing was the latest one is there is a zip at the front this the zip here yeah and um, so the actual zip bit bit of it here seems really quite reasonable I suppose but this bit the the little um, handle that you hold onto to actually zip it is made of or was was made of because it snapped basically is made of there's a bit of it there's a bit of it there it's the cheapest nastiest tap bit of fucking plastic in the world and now you can't undo or do up your life jacket right so somebody I think, crew, you're charging 100 quid for these bloody things. You're having them knocked together in China somewhere for like £4 each, right? And shipping them to the UK for 20p each. You're charging 100, 70, between 70, 80 and 100 quid for it. Can't you put a proper zip on it that doesn't break, you know? So the life jacket has failed and it's failed twice on zips crew life jackets zips the zips are shit right and they're not up to this type of work or this type of environment yeah you're taking your life jacket on and off on and off on and off you know even when you're sailing you might you might want to you know you might want to take clothes off or put clothes on so you're, you're taking your life jacket off you might want to go to the toilet or what whatever the hell it is you know so uh yeah, the, that's the problem with that. The cheaper ones don't seem to struggle with it, amazingly. Uh, probably because they haven't got a zip. No, they've got, no, that's what it is. They haven't got a zip. They've just got a clip, and the clips don't break. So the cheaper ones haven't got a zip. But they're not supposed to be the super-duper offshore um, uh, uh, ones, and they're not, they're not charging 100 quid for them. Right, so these ones, that's a crew one as well. Uh, and that is plastic, but it has, uh, so far I've used this, no, I, that's too small for me, that's the one from the missus, but um, they don't seem to break. So the problem with these crew um, offshore life jacket doodars is the zips are shit, basically. Yeah, I think this is a lot, a lot of the, um, a lot of the uh, sailing equipment is like that. It's kind of suitable, no matter what it says on the tin, it's kind of suitable for occasional weekend use. But once you start using it all the time, you have to you, you'll be replacing stuff because you're going to break it. Two weeks of sailing, or break half your equipment. Um, so anyway, that's my that's my moaning and whining and bitching uh, at the moment. All oh, right, so, uh, right, I've made it ashore in Falmouth then, and um, so I've, I've come. I've put the dinghy on the. Um, Falmouth Yacht Haven, which is run by the town council, as opposed to one of the marinas. Um, I'm not sure if you have to pay for it, there was no one at the kiosk. Um, but a guy told me the numbers for the press were security gate, so there you go. Um, I can just about see Puffin right out there in the distance. Um, you can see. There she is. Laundry. Right, bin and done the laundry. Right, and it is now. Hang on. Quarter five. Is another another one of the aspects to living living on the boat. Yeah, that you have to that I I have to get used to. Because um, you think to yourself, well, I'll just nip and do the laundry, or I'll just nip and buy some 
you know, some food or some beer, some spuds or something, do you know what I mean? And uh, you think that about midday, and by the time you've done that, you're like, oh, shit, it's like, it's, it's the evening already. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly where you moor the dinghy at the Yacht Haven, um, all the shops around there are just tourist shops. They're trying to sell you jewellery or things made out of wood and, you know, posh clothes and all this stuff, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, basically. But a lot of, there's a few bookshops as well, old bookshops, which I really like actually. But anyway, um, so any, anyway, so exactly where you plonk the dinghy down, all around there is a cluster of just tourist shops, really. And then everything useful to you, you have to walk from there out towards the outskirts. Luckily, it's not a very big town.